Okay, I want you to take out your work from yesterday. Well then, it's still in the box, so you get it. Araceli's not here? Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, number one, I couldn't figure out 14. So cross it off. I've got to figure it out. I'll research it, and I'll figure out how to do it. But doing it quickly like this, I wasn't able to do it on the board. So don't worry about doing number 14. Cross it off. Okay? All right. I want to go over some things that people are struggling with. When it says to factor something. Good morning, Center Middle School. Happy Wednesday morning to you. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your day. <clears throat> Got just a few announcements for you this morning. First off, Officer Sparks is having his annual Design and Center ISD Police Car Contest. You can draw your own or pick up an outline of a police car from the front office and get creative. Pictures will be judged on creativity, overall design, school pride, and overall coolness. Drawings will have to be turned back into the office no later than Monday, April the 2nd. Winners will be announced on April the 3rd. There will be one winner for each grade, yep. and they will win their choice of a yeah, large cheese know. or pepperoni pizza to be shared with their friends on Thursday, April the 5th. Oh, I want also, pizza. Student's Market Calendar <laughs> April 5th is our beta dance, our spring dance. Sorry, Karan, we're waiting April for 5th. announcements. It is a semi-formal dance, and the theme is Starry Night. Oh, wow. Tickets are $10. You can Hi, Karan. Burn Hello. 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 You can also yes, request a song oh, yeah. when you turn in your $10. Yeah. Tell them hello. Hey, what? Is it recording? We have a ring of yeah. found a right ladies' recording. restroom. It's you can not identify fine. the ring, come by the front office, and that ring will be returned to you. We're not quite that. Also, there will be a beta meeting Tuesday, March 27th at 7 15 at the fourth school in the library. And we got a happy birthday to Princess from Ashley, Riley, and Stephanie. So happy birthday, Princess. That is all of our announcements for today. At this time, if you will please stand up for our pledge. That's not rude. Watch out. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas pledge. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. You'll please remain standing for a moment of silence. <coughs> Teachers, if you'll do a quick dress code check, thank you and have a great day. Hey, I hope y'all had a great spring break. Well, chat later, but I don't want to waste uh, video time here. On the work from yesterday, 8-5, we need to go over some terms. Some people aren't quite understanding what to do. When it says factor, that means I need factors. When it says solve, that means you need to solve it down to x equals. One of the problems I had on number 11, so we're going to go ahead and do it because there's another one on your work for tomorrow, so let's look at number 11. It says factor 12x squared minus 27, okay? What's the first thing you see that you can pull out of there? Yes? Well, what can you factor out? Well, you can, can you factor 12 from 27? No. No. What does 12 and 27 have in common? Three, and we don't have an X, so all I can factor out is a three, right? Okay, that leaves me 4X squared minus 9. Does everybody agree? Okay, that's not done. When I have an X squared, that means that I can factor some more out of there. Okay, so if you notice that this 4 is a perfect square, and this 9 is a perfect square, it makes it really easy to factor. Because what's the perfect square of 4? 2. 2 squared is 4. What's the square root of 9? 3. Okay? So all I need to do is this 3 is still a factor. Okay? Times 2x minus 3 plus 2 times. 
times 2x plus 3, okay? Those are my factors. That's my answer. Those are the factors. If it said solve, then I would need to know, well, it's like this. 3, it's either going to be x is equal to 3, right? Can't do anything with that 3. Or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. x is equal to what? Well, it would be 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Or 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And I would solve that, okay? But it doesn't say to solve. It just says give me the factors. All right, these are factors. Yes? What that 3 on the outside of parentheses, if you multiply it by the other three? What do you mean? The 3. No, 3 would be a factor. What? 3 is a factor. There's three different factors? Yes. There are three different factors. If I plug it back in here, I'm just going to have to factor it back out. It's a factor. So your answer is 3, and then that's another answer, and that's another answer. Correct. So all of those are one answer. Because this is 6x minus 9, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. I can't factor it times, I can't multiply it times this and that, can I? Then I would take this and multiply it times that. You'd be left with this. That's what I'm saying. It's 3 times this times this. It's not 3 times this and 3 times this, then combine it all. No, because that's not factored. The 6 and 9, what do you factor out of 6x minus 9? 3. 3. That's a factor. Okay? That is a factor. So in order to get 12x minus 27, what I'm trying to say here, if you multiply these two together, what are you going to get? 4x squared minus 9, right? And then times 3 is going to give you 12x squared minus 27. Those are all factors of 12x squared minus 27. Okay? You're like, huh? Well, you, you know I mean? I'm really confused if you're flipping it or anything. I don't know. So when it says solve, like on number uh, 12, you need to have an x equals, don't you? Okay. Solve on number 14, you should have probably two x equals, shouldn't you? You mean 13? Oh, 13. And then number 14 we crossed out, right? Okay. And then number 10 is we're doing the factor and stuff. Number 10. Um, yes, you're just giving me the factors like number 11. Okay. All right. All right, let's go on to with today's lesson. Topic 9.3, growth, exponential growth, and decay. A general formula for exponential growth and decay is A equals C times 1 plus or minus R to the power of T. Okay? 
Eddie, this reminds me very much, and it should remind you very much, of the formula you had for compound interest last year in eighth grade. The only difference is we didn't do a plus or minus. We only did a plus, okay, because we were gaining interest. Here, we are going to be considering decay or depreciation, and so depreciation is the amount, uh, value amount, that something depreciates once you buy it. You buy a brand new car on the car lot for $40,000. The minute you drive it off the lot, it depreciates in value. You put two miles on that car, you bring it back to that dealer and say, I don't want it anymore. Guess what? You're not getting your $40,000 back. They're going to take depreciation away from it. Okay? So, A, it represents the final amount. <coughs> C is the initial amount. Plus, you are either going to use one or the other. You will... <coughs> Use one or the other. Plus is used for growth. Words like increases, appreciate. Minus is used for decay. Words like decreases or depreciates. R is for your rate of increase. Decrease, and you're always going to convert this to a decimal. And T is your time. If something depreciates monthly, then you'll use monthly as your time. If it depreciates yearly, then you'll use yearly as your time. So you kind of have to be careful on what you, whether you need to convert your time or not. Um, the last thing I want to say, I'm sitting here thinking about the problem that we just did. <coughs> and I need to clarify something because I was wrong. Can you believe I was wrong? I can't believe I was wrong. I know, that's a big thing. When you said... What did you have, Allie? 6x? 6x plus 9. Plus 9. Okay, we had 4x. What was it? What was our problem? Okay. And we pulled a three, right? All right. And then I said, okay, we ended up with um, 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3, correct? Is that right? Okay. All right. You're correct. This is not a factor because it doesn't have an x, does it? Okay. So it would have to be 6x plus 3 times 6x minus 3, and you're correct. Those are your two factors. But that doesn't work out. It's 2x. That doesn't work out. See, it doesn't work out. It's got to be this. Because if you have 2x plus 3 times 2, you would have to have it times... To make 12, 
you would have to have 2 and 6. Do you see this? To make 12x squared. And you want something that's going to cancel out the middle. So you'd have to have 2x and 3 times 3 is not going to get you 27, is it? So it'd have to be so I'm sorry. It's plus 2x plus 3? Is that what you got? Yes, that's what I got. That would be right. Now, the next one that you're going to do tomorrow, and I won't mark it wrong on anybody, okay? Because I've kind of gone off the track here. But the one you're going to do tomorrow is or tonight is going to be 4x cubed minus 36x. And do you see how you can pull that that 4x out of both of them? So that is one of your factors. Okay? Just so you know. Okay? Um, you could pull 4x out and then you would have x squared minus 9. Correct? And then that would leave you 4x and x minus 3 times x plus 3. Does that make any sense? That's your answer. And that would have to be your answer, yes. So x is equal to 4x. You can have one, two, or three answers, right? Or no answers at all. Because you're in a cube. Do you see that? That it can be one, it can be one, two, three, or none. All right, because you're in a cubic situation right here. Okay. All right, let's go back to our problem today. All right. So we've got a problem. It says the population of Johnson City has grown at a rate of 3.2 percent per year since 1990. If the population in 1990 was 25,000 people, what was the population in the year 2000? So we have a formula, and this is not on your formula chart. You're going to have to remember this. Since we are doing growth, correct, has grown, we want a plus sign, r to the power of t. You just got to memorize it. And I'll show you a way to memorize it later on, not today. The way, the easiest way to think about it. So we don't know what A is because that's what we're looking for. C is what? Initial amount or 25,000. R is your rate, which is what? What is that going to be as a decimal? Point zero three two. Point zero three two. You have to move it two times to the left. Okay, and your time is how long? Ten years. So then just a matter of filling it in, 25,000 times 1 plus 0 .032 to the power of 10, which is what? Population, yeah, that would be a calculator time. That's how many people the population is now. Well, are you going to round that as 0 0.02 people? Okay, 34,256 people. Okay, all right, so let's flip the page. A tractor has a depreciation rate of 19% per year. If the original price of the tractor was $29,000, what is its value of the tractor five years later? So remember we have a formula. A equals what? A and I'm doing a minus R because I'm doing a depreciation to the power of time. So we don't know what A is. We've got C is what? 29,000. We've got R at what? 19%, which is 0 0.19.
and then we've got time of five years. Ten thousand. Is that what you got? One hundred and eleven dollars and sixty seven cents is what I got. Okay. Can you imagine that? In five years, the tractor went down it from twenty nine thousand dollars worth of value to ten thousand dollars worth of value. Yeah, at nineteen percent. Yep. Well, think about it. Twenty percent. That's a fifth of its value each year going away. All right? Suppose you invest $1,000 and an account paying 5.5% interest compounded annually. Find the balance after three years. Okay. So we've got A equals C1. Is this a plus or a minus? Plus R to the power of T. We don't know what A is. We've got C of $1,000. We've got R of 5.5%. That's already a decimal, right? I don't have to do anything to it. it oh, it's a percent. Okay. Oh. How about 0 0.055? She said twice, and then she didn't say. Then she said it wrong. Yep, yep. T is equal to what? Three. Three. So we've got one thousand dollars. One plus point zero five five to the power of three. And what do we get? And twenty four cents. Woo! -hoo! Okay. That's good, okay? All right, there shouldn't be any problems except for you need to remember that on your assignment today, there are some things where it says factor completely. Solve, factor and solve are different. Solve by formula, solve by factoring, find the intercepts, okay? All right, and you have a wonderful day. Not, uh, God bless your toenails, I guess.